This is ridiculous. <laughs> Look at Hobbs. He knows that Calvin's gonna go over the cliff. This is ridiculous. Yes, Hobbs, scientific progress does go boink. Hey, butthead! Calvin, stop pretending you're being attacked by that leaf pile. You're making a damn fool of yourself. Hey, butthead! Salutations, YouTube! I am your fabulous host, Clay Kremling, and today we're going to talk about a game that's certainly lost in time. Beetlebug 3. Intriguing, right? Well, let me start from the beginning. Beetlebug 3 was the third installment in the Beetlebug trilogy, and the Beetlebug games were in the... puzzle genre? I'm not really sure what this kind of a game is called. Now, for those confused out of their minds why I would review Beetlebug 3 instead of Beetlebug 1, is, well, the Beetlebug games are actually pretty forgettable. The reason I'm not talking about Beetlebug 1 is because it's pretty much just a very primitive version of Beetlebug 3. And what about Beetlebug 2? Ha! That's a good game to play if you want to fall asleep. But I have very fond memories of playing Beetlebug 3 while I was still in my egg. After all, it was the first game I ever played that had full voice acting talents, which is something I adore in games today. Quick paced gameplay and thrilling music, it was all just a very enjoyable experience. But as usual, the one question remains. Is Beetlebug 3 worth the trouble today? Or shall it be left in the past? Well, without further ado, This theme never gets old. Party time! Okay... Alright, I'll let you watch a bit of the first cutscene to get a taste of what they're like. Beetlebug, do me the favor at least and take two of the kids to do some decent groceries. We need new leftovers. Gee... Yeah, he's eating my hand. I just started to make my spot on the sofa really comfortable. When I come back, I'll have to start it all over again. Don't forget the kids. Well, which of you should I take? Let me skip a little bit because this is gonna take a while. Hey, Beetlebug. Hey, sweetie. I'm in line at the cashiers and bringing home some great stuff. Is there anything you could do right for once? Oh, goodness, if you had only stayed home. What's that supposed to mean? Could you please make up your mind? Our children have been kidnapped. Ah. Oh. What a lovely coincidence. So, within the possible 10 or 20 minutes Beetlebug has left his house, all 1,341 of his kids were kidnapped, right underneath his wife's nose. No, not all. We still have Buggy Sue and Junior Bug. Unless, of course, you lost them on the way. Don't patronize me, I'm too young to be a parent. Oh, then she says this. I guess that means we have to make new. I guess that means we have to make new. It's kind of cut off at the end, but it's there. Oh god. That is so exhausting. Darling, I have another plan. I will save our buggies. At least that probably won't be as difficult. Ah, <laughs> oh, couldn't have said it better myself. And so Beetlebug decides to embark on a huge journey to save all of his kids instead of going for a good old roll in the hay with his wife, even though this is the guy who only a moment ago didn't want to leave his comfy spot on the couch to get groceries for his family. 
All right, nostalgia, here I come. Pop up on rescue mission. And here I go. What? What the hell is going on? Why the hell am I going so slow? Pardon my obscenity, Beetlebug, but what the hell is going on? You guys are witnessing this, right? Remember earlier when I was reminiscing about what I liked about this game and I mentioned quick-paced gameplay? This is not quick-paced. I don't know what's going on. I've played this game on four different operating systems since I was like, I don't know, seven, and not one time when I played this game did he go this slow. The only theory I can muster up is there must have been a patch or an update that probably changed his speed. But who the heck would update this game? At the top right of the title screen, it does say what version it is, but I haven't been keeping track, so this information is useless. As you can see from the gameplay, I tried checking the options for some sort of speed setting, but sadly, I couldn't find anything. Fortunately, though, you're able to play the game with the mouse. Although it still doesn't go quite as fast as it used to, it still is a better option than using the keyboard, so I recommend using this. <gasps> Whew, nothing like a good dose of trauma before you play video games, huh? The goal of each and every level is to collect all of the kids that are spread across the level and bring them to a little door. Papa I swear all of his kids are girls. I wonder what his kids sound like with their voices pitched higher. I wish I hadn't done that. And while doing so, you must maneuver your way around ice and cheese and dirt. All doing so while trying not to get squished. And Beetlebug, being the buff, athletic human being that he is, can get squashed by pretty much anything. Boulders, balls that weigh a ton, magic potions, pumpkins, even bonus points like coins and shards. In total, there are 100 levels. These little storybooks are the juiciest part. One of the strongest driving points that keep me playing are the storybooks. They're the same kind of cutscenes from the beginning of the game, but they go on to introduce new plot development and new items. Great! It works! Give me another bottle! My favorite of all the cutscenes are the ones that introduce villains, and there are a total of four, sadly, villains that are introduced through cutscenes. And who can forget such well-known enemies to Beatles, like German fly swatters, Hey, Beetleback! Do I know you? Sure you do! You just spoke to one of us in the phone! What do you mean, one of you? I only see you! Boys! Come over here! I found him! Mushrooms with explosive throat mucus. Oh dear, here we go again! Come on, Bugs! Let's get out of here! Freaking pedophile spiders that sound like me when I try to make friends. Thank you, my friend. You should come by and visit me. I'll ensnare you and warm you with my friendship. You won't ever want to leave. And then some weird caterpillar thingy that looks like it's made out of snot. He turns out to be part of a huge plot twist, but you can never touch him during gameplay. As for the gameplay, it's smooth and fluid. Flying through dirt like it's not even there, rocks falling around you, using new tactics to flip items on their head, shoot fly swatters to smithereens, using bombs to blow up debris, running away from explosions left and right, extinguishing all that gets in your way, only to run to a door to let all your kids go in and gather even more points.
Although it's not the best game, it is fun to play. I've never found myself getting bored, and the storybook cutscenes seem to be like a reward for beating levels. Well, to me anyway. Just take a short break and watch the game characters interact awkwardly. And you know what? Now that I really think about it, all the way back then, and even today, that's probably my favorite part about this game. The character. The humor, the voice acting, the interaction, even the design of the characters. I don't know why, but some of the characters in this game always kind of reminded me of Ardman animation. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys see the resemblance as well. Hey, look, this guy's afraid of my hand. Yeah, take that, take that, take that, take that! Oh look, his head is going crazy! I'm gonna set all of them off at the same time! Mm. I know I can do this! Well, that was pretty fun. In this case, I'm going to let you guys play through the game and find out what happens yourself. Story-wise, that is. This game will definitely be more interesting if you don't know what's going to happen next. If you want to try the game out for yourself, thankfully, it's still purchasable on BigFishGames.com. Right next to Beetle Bomp and Christmas Fucking Wonderland 3. Once again, this is not a sponsored video. Just go to the link in the description. So, I guess you know what this means. This game does hold up today. Sure, it's not the best, but... It's a very unique game, and it is actually pretty fun, and I do think everyone can find some enjoyment out of this game. And this game will always have a place in the Clay Kremlin Horde. Ah, <sighs> Beetlebug 3 and Wonderland Adventures. Two great games. Hopefully next time we'll be able to put in another game. Right? Well, uh, see you later, YouTube. Here's a teaser for the next review. This is Clay Kremling, signing off.